are seven known versions of the Sigillium Deo Meth as of 2010 AD. The first is from an old version of the Grimoire of Pope Honorius, Sloan Manuscript 313. The second oldest is also from an version of the Grimoire of Pope Honorius, Sloan 3852. Following this is the Sigillum Dei Meth of John D. from the late 1590s. Athanasius Kircher composed his own version of the Sigillum Dei Meth in 1652. Next, in a version of the Grimoire of Solomon in Latin and another in Italian, we find the latest versions of the Siglium Dei in Meth prior to the 20th century. In 1956, this Berlin Codex manuscript from the Puchart collection was discovered. The Sigillum Dei and Meth we will be using in this series of lectures will consist of the English version of John Dee's Sigillum Dei and Meth, color coded according to a specific set of instructions which will follow. Firstly, let us introduce the color coding system that we will use to decipher the Sigillum Dei Meth. Here we see that each of the seven planets is assigned one of the seven colors of the spectrum of light divided in a prism. Next, in the following series of diagrams, we will be looking at the letters in the outermost heptagon as above the letters from the interior of the outermost heptagon which we'll be looking at below. In the first array we see the seven archangels whose names govern over the seven days of the week. Color coded as according to the planets. However in this arrangement we will be reading their names not up and down along columns as color coded but from left to right along rows. And likewise, in the second array, we can see that the names may be read color-coded diagonally or may be read across as rows from left to right. Thus, the seven names given by John D. for his Enochian planetary archangels can each be encrypted into the outermost heptagon's lettering as well as the lettering interior to the outermost heptagon so that the first letter of an angel's name appears in the first box of the first row of the heptagon while the second letter of the same angel's name will appear in the first box of the second row of the heptagon Likewise, the second angel's name, first letter, will appear in the second box of the second row. And thus, the second letter of the second angel's name will appear in the third row in the second box thereof, and etc. Here we see the planetary color code again. The colors are all the same. However, the order we will be looking at the attributes in is different. First, we see the daughters of light, the interior to the points of the heptagram. The second 
are the sons of light, the heptagram itself. Third are the sons of sons, the innermost heptagon. And fourth, the daughters of daughters, the second or middle heptagon. And because we can see that the heptagram itself has a skip one pattern, we can follow this inner sorting method all the way around the heptagram as it intertwines with the heptagon and observe that the result of this technique is a slightly different attribute for each second line than for all of the other attributes on that side such that each attribute of the second line will be slanted one position over from its own similar attributes on the next side. And in the next section we will discuss in brief the derivation of the unpronounceable names of God through a rotation of the external ring, either clockwise or counterclockwise. As we discussed a moment ago, the unpronounceable names of God are derived from rotating the outermost circle of the Sigil Meth either clockwise or counterclockwise, according to whether the number appears above the letter or whether the letter appears above the number. Thus, the result would be to yield either a rotation clockwise around the Siglam Dei Imeth from one letter to the next according to the number given with that letter, or otherwise an opposite rotation around counterclockwise if the letter appeared above the number. Thus, the Siglam Dei Imeth is meant to be rotated either clockwise or counterclockwise in order to decipher this method of encryption. The earliest known device to utilize this form of method was called the Alberti cipher disk. The Alberti cipher disk, also called formula, is a cipher disk which was described by Leon Battista Alberti in his treatise De Cifris of 1467. The device embodies the first example of polyalphabetic substitution with mixed alphabets and variable period, and is made up of two concentric disks attached by a common pin which can rotate one with respect to the other. The larger one is called stabilis, stationary or fixed. The smaller one is called mobilis, movable. The circumference of each disk is divided into 24 equal cells. The outer ring contains one uppercase alphabet for plain text, and the inner ring has a lowercase mixed alphabet for cipher text. The outer ring also includes the numbers 1 to 4 for the super encipherment of a code book containing 336 phrases with assigned numerical values. This is a very effective method of concealing the code numbers since their equivalents cannot be distinguished from the other garbled letters. The sliding of the alphabets is controlled by key letters included in the body of the cryptogram. Likewise, when we compare the Siglum Dei Meth to the Alberti cipher disk method of encryption, what we find is that the Siglum Dei Meth itself can act as a complex form of cipher disk, which includes as many as four and at least as few as three different levels upon which one can decrypt or encrypt the information based on the letters and numbers comprised therein. Regarding whether or not it can be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise, each of these layers contains at least two different types of interpretation for its information. 
such that there are levels of information for each rotation of each layer. Note that the star-shaped patterns can only be rotated an increment number of times according to the number of corners and sides that each of the patterns itself has. Thus, you can rotate them counterclockwise or clockwise, but you can only rotate the seven shapes in seven different ways, and the pentacular shape itself can only be rotated into five different positions. The result is such that there are 76 total recombinations for the different positions of the different letters and numbers on the Sigilam Day Meth. A genuine cipher disk, despite the fact that Dee's own version of the Sigilam Day Meth was actually engraven on wax, this apparent mystery becomes more easily dissoluble when we consider the relationship of the size of Dee's Sigilam Day Meth to the size of his crystal ball used for scrying. The method of scrying, or reading through some form of object or another, has been applied throughout the centuries to water, crystals, and other forms of semi-transparent objects. Dee's use of it involved a crystal ball and the ability to read upside down and backwards through the glass conversely and it was using this method of scrying that D comprised his entire Enochian system of encryption and decipherment. In this section we will be looking at John D's Bonorum system the Bonorum, or Base 7 system, is usually considered a separate system than that of John Dee's later and much more complex Enochian works, although it does provide an easier method of understanding the system of encryption that Dee used throughout. The Bonorum system is used to derive 49 different names from a series of 7 squares with 49 letters each. We begin with the first square, central in this array, which has 49 letters B. Each letter B is numbered according to the name that it begins. The next letter follows in the second square, then in the third, then in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and the final letter is in the seventh square, such that beginning with the letter B in the first cell of the first square we follow to the letter that is numbered in the second square according to the number 1 and thus follows in the third square and the letter according to the number 1 and so forth until we have the first name of seven letters likewise beginning with B2 we follow to the letter in the second square numbered 2 and so forth until we have assembled the second name and we follow this method 49 times until we have assembled 49 names of seven letters each note that the letters in all the squares besides the letter B in square 1 are shuffled such that none appear in the same order this is the first layer of encryption for the Bonorum system and yields 49 names of the so-called Bonorum Princes, which we here see labeled as around a circle, yielding the second layer of encryption of the Bonorum system based on the seven planets, given in the order Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Moon, then recombined and shuffled such that each of the seven planets has one of the seven planets as an attribute within itself with its own planetary attribute as ruler over the others. So although 
preserving the same order of the planets throughout. And this structure is then assigned according to the 49 names derived from D's system of the Benora to yield the 49 so-called princes of the Benora, which we can see given here as according to each attribute and not as according to each planet that governs the seven attributes. Following a pattern such that, for example, Venus of Venus is given as the king, Venus of the sun, the following planet would be given as the prince, and Venus of the other planets as an attribute alone is given as a governor. And this is the second layer of encryption of the Benorum of John D. And following from this we find the 42 Benorum ministers for each of the seven planets that are derived by taking six letters from each of the 49 names of the princes of the Benorum and shuffling them such that seven tables can be formed taken from the second letter of each of the names of the princes then from the third letter of each of the names of the princes then from the fourth letter of each of the names of the princes and so forth given as six rows of seven letters each thus forming seven columns for a total of 42 letters for each of the seven planetary tables these letters are then shuffled and recombined to form the names of 42 ministers for each of the seven planetary tables that we can see here are assigned a day of the week for the ruling planet a planetary ruler each for one of the attributes of the planets and a metal from the seven primary elements given by alchemy. Also note that each of these attributes is shuffled, constituting the third level or layer of encryption of John Dee's Benorum system, yielding first from seven squares, seven lettered names of the 49 princes, and second by reshuffling the letters from the names of these princes, all but the original square of the Bonorum, which is only the letter B, to derive the 42 ministers of the Bonorum system, which itself can be shaped and reformed and mapped onto a three-dimensional cube, each side of which is comprised of one of the sides of the unfolded cross of the Bonorum thus depicting the entire system of the seven squares of 49 letters each graphed onto the exterior surface of a cube in such a manner that we can begin to see the way in which John D himself most likely derived the Benorum system as well as the later Enochian system which is similarly able to be graphed onto a cube However, in order to understand the way John D. derived these systems through scrying or looking through his crystal ball, we have to think not outside the box, as the popular modern saying goes, but think as John D. himself must have thought how to derive these systems from looking within. The final mystery of Dee's Benorum is given as the Holy Table, serving as a bridge between the Benorum and the Enochian systems. Although the outer ring of letters has never been deciphered in its meaning, the interiormost square of the Holy Table derives from a peculiar arrangement of several names from the Benorum, the derivation for which John Dee has left a series of subtle clues in one of his ciphers. Here we see, according to Donald Tyson, 
a later D scholar, an interpretation of the same graph as previously, given by D himself. Here is Pat and Gerald Zalewski's version of the same rearrangement of letters. And here is my own duplication of this chart according to a slight rotation of the interior most square, which in turn yields the original square of letters at the center of the holy table given by John D. Now, there also exists another version of the holy table in the language of the Enochian alphabet, a series of letters created by D himself and attributed to be Atlantean in age and angelic in origin. And here we can see the holy table in the Enochian alphabet adorned with the seven so-called ensigns of creation. The ensigns of creation are another invention of John Dee's, each assigned to one of the seven planets which have not yet been deciphered in their meaning or method of derivation. At one point, Robert Flood, another scholar to have studied John D, attributed these letters on the ensigns of creation to the names of 72 goetic influences from the grimoire or lesser key of King Solomon. Although there is absolutely no evidence to support this attribution by Flood, and it is unlikely that John D. himself made this connection. Notice also that the order of the planets for the seven ensigns of creation is different than the order of the seven planets for the Bonorum, princes, and ministers. And so we see that the meaning of each of the seven ensigns of creation is as of yet unknown, as well as the reason for its placement relative to the others around the holy table. The usual depiction of which in Enochian is actually a reflection or mirror image of the original Enochian version of the holy table that was used by John Dee himself. Although there does exist a second layman in the Enochian alphabet known to have been created and used by John Dee himself, it's translation can be known, although so far its meaning and derivation remain undeciphered by scholars. And finally we come to John Dee's initial or first attempt at a layman, which he subsequently considered to be goetic and discarded from his working, a trend which was followed by all subsequent scholars in their interpretation of it, despite the fact this layman probably holds the key to deciphering all the rest. To begin our study of the authentically Enochian aspect of John Dee's work, let us turn our attention to a medallion he wore himself embrazened in gold, depicting the twelve tribes of Israel given in their usual order of listing as from the cited biblical references. Although here D gives us two specific additions to the system that enable us to determine its exact decipherment. First, he gives us the four cardinal directions, and second, he gives us twelve names of seven letters each to correspond with the twelve tribes such that for each of the four cardinal directions, we find three names for three tribes. These twelve seven-letter names are each numbered, and when we connect the dots of these numbers, we derive the shape of John Dee's unicursal dodecagram. Dee's own term for the twelve seven-letter terms was the twelve angelic kings, three of which rule each of the four cardinal directions, given by John Dee as the four elemental watchtowers. Thus, here we see the great table of all four watchtowers. In the upper left, the watchtower of air. 
in the upper right, the Watchtower of Earth. In the lower right, the Watchtower of Water. And in the lower left, the Watchtower of Fire. And it should be duly noted that no one has yet deciphered John Dee's method of encryption of this four watchtower system. By using a method of color coding, we can better visualize Dee's own attributions of traits to these various different ciphers. So here we see purple is medicine, royal blue precious stones, sky blue transformation, azurite the four elements, yellow natural substances, orange transportation, red mechanical arts, garnet secret discovery, green the 24 seniors, silver the god names vertical, and gold the god names horizontal. The more popularly known version of these four elemental watchtowers depicts the sigils of 91 seven letter places in the earth given such that there are three such seven letter sigils for each of the 30 heirs aside from the lowest heir tax which has four here we see air is color coded yellow earth blue fire red and water green so we can see accordingly the airs along the right are color coded alike in the following list of these 91 places in the earth we will be using the color coding of both the 30 heirs as well as the original attributes given by John D. And so here we see a list of all 91 names given according to the 30 heirs and color coded per each letter according to the attribute of its location on the four watchtowers. Note also that each of the 91 names is assigned to one of the 12 angelic kings. And also note that there is a 92nd name that is excluded on this list. Again, using the color coding of the original attributes of John D. per letter of the name, we can next list these 91 places in the earth by one of 12 angelic kings according to one of four cardinal directions as well as one of 30 heirs for each seven letter sigil representing a place in the earth each letter coded according to the traits given by D for that location and so to come to understand the system as D himself may have intended it to be mapped onto the surface of the four watchtowers. The last aspect derived from these four watchtowers are 24 seniors, four great kings, and 12 names of God, taken from each of the four central crosses, previously color-coded green, yielding six seniors from each, as seen here for the cross of air, and likewise yielding one great king from the center of each cross and each element's 12 letter name of God is read across the bar of each of these crosses. The place of the 24 seniors and four great kings is upon the elemental watchtowers. However, the 12 names of three, four, and five letters each appear as holy banners surrounding representation of the earth divided into the four cardinal directions. Dee's own depiction of his 30 heirs system was as 30 concentric circles, the outermost being the uppermost and the innermost being the lowest. And again we can see that by color coding these 30 heirs we can understand their placement as according to the four elemental watchtowers 
forming four concentric elemental realms. Here depicted based on the color coding of the 30 airs given for the 91 sigils of the places in Earth, the four elemental watchtowers, all of which are derived from Dee's own creation of unknown derivation, which, as any student of Dee knows, were performed on April 20th, 1587, into a different order than the one that has been used by researchers since.